patria socialista a muerte. ¡Venceremos, muchachos! Venezuela's leader, Hugo Chávez, rose from poverty to hold unrivaled influence in a country with some of the world's largest oil reserves. This is Simón Romero for the New York Times. I covered Chávez for five years, from 2006 when I arrived in Caracas as bureau chief, until 2011. Chávez was a complicated man, intensely loved or hated in Venezuela. He was seen by some as almost a messianic leader, both in Venezuela and elsewhere in Latin America, who thought he could be re-elected indefinitely, wielding power in the tradition of Latin America's caudillos, or strongmen. He had a televangelist's gift for oratory. And sought out media attention, indulging in hours long appearances on state TV. But he was also intensely private. He obsessed with what he thought were plots to oust him. He called his critics at home traitors and aimed some of his most bitter attacks at Washington. La pretensión hegemónica del imperialismo norteamericano pone en riesgo la supervivencia misma de la especie humana. Chávez did everything he could to counter the U.S. government, from personal insult el señor presidente de los Estados Unidos, a quien yo llamo el diablo, to forging close ties with Western foes like Iran's Ahmadinejad, Libya's Gaddafi, and Syria's Bashar al-Assad. But it was his friendship with Cuba's Fidel Castro that mattered most. Chávez saw in Castro a survivor and mentor, and Castro saw in Chávez a new type of populist leader who could help Cuba. A sort of cross-pollination ensued, Caracas providing Havana with oil, while Cuba sent its human capital to Venezuela, including doctors and military advisors. A former soldier who led Venezuela's failed 1992 military coup. Los objetivos que nos planteamos no fueron logrados en la ciudad capital. Chávez was democratically elected in 1998. Impulsaré las transformaciones democráticas necesarias. He had promised the country a revolution, and he delivered one, removing the old order and using the country's oil revenues to boost spending on education and health care. Many poor Venezuelans adored him, feeling included in the political system for the first time. But others saw his government as highly dysfunctional. Caracas, once one of Latin America's most prosperous cities, took on a dystopian feel with one of the highest murder rates in the world. Hospitals lack basic medical supplies. Food shortages plague the city. And one luxury skyscraper, the Tower of David, which was built for bankers, has become a home for thousands of squatters. One of the most telling moments in my time covering Chavez was a trip to the Andes with him and the American actor Sean Penn. This man, with a visceral connection to the poor, seemed to bask in the luxury of his presidency as he roamed his spacious Airbus, complete with a private lounge. Me confirmaron la existencia de un tumor abscesado. As his health faded beginning in 2011, Chavez traveled to Cuba for treatment. Nunca dejaré de servir al pueblo venezolano. Nunca, hasta el último día de mi vida. He would disappear for weeks, turning Venezuela into a place ruled by rumor and speculation about his health. His legacy remains memorialized in the murals that dot the many slums of Caracas. The myth of Chávez often prevailed over the contradictions inherent in the man himself. <laughs>